We're going to look a little at the optics involved in cameras. I am no photography expert, so those of you who are, I apologize, but I will do my best. So cameras have converging lenses, and it takes light that is passing through the lens, and it focuses it back here on what used to be film, and what sometimes still is, but more often now, in digital cameras, it's what we call a CCD, which stands for a charge coupled device, and it produces a real image. This is not the focal length necessarily of the lens, but it is the image location. Now, we had a question a while back asking if cameras can take pictures of uh, real and virtual images, and yes, they can, uh, but if you, that's if you have a virtual image from something else but the image produced by the opti optics of the camera is actually a real image. You need a real image, you need the light focusing to a point here in order to create a picture. If it were diverging, um, that would not work. Now you can have it diverging when it hits the lens as long as it focuses it after it passes through the lens. Okay, we have a couple of other um, main parts to a camera. One of them is called the iris diaphragm or sometimes known as the stop which is this thing here and it essentially limits how much light gets through and we'll talk about that in more detail but that helps with uh, uh, the exposure for one thing and also with something else known as depth of field. Then we've got this shutter here and what that does is that opens really quickly and uh, that also has to do uh, influences how much light gets in how exposed the picture is because if you have too little light you get a dark picture and if you have too much light uh, it's not like the picture just gets more and more bright and vivid it, it just gets washed out and there's just light everywhere and that's not good so the shutter speed is important but you kind of have to balance these two things which again we'll talk about in more detail as far as the CCDs you basically have a two-dimensional array of a bunch of pixels and at each pixel it kind of measures the relative strengths of the different colors of light and then picks out the the strongest color and then assigns that color to that location on the screen and then uh, um, then there's wires that take that information to into a processor and then uh, then to some permanent storage your SD card or whatever on your camera with film there was actually a chemical reaction taking place um, when light hit certain points of the film then it would darken uh, those points where light was hitting it and then you'd have to go into a dark room and develop them and all of these fun things that uh, people don't do so much anymore but alright moving right along so here are the different adjustments we tend to make for our cameras one is shutter speed which is how quickly this thing opens and closes um, it's usually you know a small fraction of a second and the shutter doesn't have to be right behind the lens sometimes the shutter could be right in front of the film here or the CCD doesn't really matter uh, the f-stop is the fancy name for this diaphragm thing and in fact it's slightly different but it, it's getting at this and so you adjust both of those things uh, basically for, for the shutter if you have something that's moving really quickly you need a really quick shutter speed otherwise it will be blurry because it's like taking a bunch of images of things in different locations and smashing them all together um, but if the light is really low conditions like taking pictures at night then you need a bit longer shutter speed in order to get enough light through to make an image um, and the f-stop can also be adjusted for those those issues as well uh, then we also have focusing so your lens has a given focal length but depending on how far away the thing is you're trying to take a picture of you need to adjust the distance between the lens and the film such that that distance will equal the image distance so those are kind of the main adjustments you have for a camera moving the lens back and forth adjusting this aperture here called the diaphragm and then opening and closing the the shutter speed so you can have like 1 over 250 seconds, 1 over 60 seconds, 1 over 400, and you, you know, those are typically the, uh, the way they list shutter speeds. Alright, so getting back to this f-stop idea, one of the main purposes of the f-stop is to determine what objects are going to be in focus. So if you have a certain object that you're trying to take a picture of, and it's, you've 
uh, adjust your focus so that that one object is in focus so its light rays come to a point on the film which is what you want then other objects at other distances say really far away objects those rays are not going to focus to a point typically uh, they're going to diverge like this and then you know this is just in one dimension so they're going to diverge left and right as well and then all the way around they'll make a circle and so we call that the circle of confusion and essentially those other uh, other objects will have kind of blurred out circles for their pixels and so that makes the pictures blurry this is as it says here greatly exaggerated now if we take that f-stop um, that diaphragm and we close this in like this well there aren't only these two light rays coming from this near object there's going to be light rays and I'm having a real hard time drawing straight lines uh, these light rays will also get focused so that works um, but these light rays that do get through for the other objects that aren't in focus um, these circles of, of confusion will tend to be smaller the smaller your aperture is so if we narrow that down and narrow that down that allows us to have a greater range of things that are in focus now they m might not be at the exact perfect spot but they will be so uh, slightly out of focus that you might not notice so the smaller the aperture the bigger your depth of field is what we call it okay now to measure this aperture we don't just measure the size of the aperture the diameter of this aperture because depending on how near or far it is from the lens and the focal length of the lens and all these things that's going to influence uh, how much light it lets through so what we do is we define this quantity called the f-stop and the f-stop is given by the ratio of the focal length to the diameter of the opening in this diaphragm thing here okay so if we have a focal length of 50 millimeters and a diameter of 25 millimeters this is going to give us 2 and we write it as f slash 2 but we pronounce it f2 so this would be an f stop of 2 or an f2 um, and you can get different f stops now let me show you so this is just kind of summarizing if you have a small aperture you're going to have the greatest depth of field so you're going to have the greatest range of things that are in focus now granted you're getting less light so you're going to need a longer shutter speed and so you need things to be more still to be able to do this so this is kind of all the the art of photography is balancing all of these different uh, different demands okay if you have a large aperture you're going to have a really shallow depth of field but you can have a really quick shutter speed in that case and you'll notice that a larger f-stop actually means a smaller hole which you can see from the equation f over d uh, because as d gets larger the f-stop gets smaller and vice versa uh, or you can just kind of think about it well the f number is kind of like how much black stuff there is here so that grows as this grows so getting back to this exposure idea the exposure of a photograph is proportional to the amount of light that reaches the film and that's proportional to the area of the opening multiplied by the time that the shutter is open and the area is proportional to the diameter squared so the exposure is proportional to the diameter squared times the time which is proportional to the time over the f-stop because the f-stop is inversely proportional to the diameter so f-stop squared so if you're increasing the f-stop which is essentially making it smaller and letting less light in you also need to increase the time uh, and you need to set up a ratio in order to figure out uh, how to keep your exposure constant as you adjust those two things and you might notice these f-stop numbers here they kind of follow a funny pattern well what's going on with that is they want each click of the f-stop to essentially double your exposure so in order to double your exposure you don't need to double the diameter you just need to double the area and so since the area is proportional to the diameter squared you need to increase the diameter by a factor of root 2 
which squared means that you increase the area by a factor of two. So these each differ by a factor of root two, which the easiest way to remember it is every other one will differ by a factor of two. So you notice you've got four, eight, 16. This is 2.8, 5.6, and then if you round a bit, 11 and 22. So that's kind of an easy way to remember that. Uh, by the way, here's a picture of a lens. These are the f-stop values here. So you can actually adjust those right on the lens. All right, on to the calculations.